young women in your life, right? You have daughters, you have cousins, you have young women who come to work where you are, you mentor young women. And you've, you've noticed that even the young women who will be running um, you know, not-for-profit foundations who will be running the American Medical Association, who will be running NASA, who will be running colleges, they all speak in a certain way in the last 15 years. They have all started to sound like they're asking questions when actually they're making the clear statements so that even the smartest girls on the planet sound like morons. <laughs> so they show up at the beginning of the semester and they come up and they say, Dr. Vereka, I'm your student. And I say, okay, do you tell me your name? And they go, Samantha Smith. <laughs> and I go, honey, I don't know. <laughs> and they say, you don't look like a feminist. I said, this is what a feminist looks like. It doesn't mean you can't wear earrings or makeup or you can't be married to the guy who teaches upstairs in the English department, which I was, that you can't, you know, that he just retired. He's the happiest man I can ever get. Uh, and he would only ever come to my office. We taught together. The students could not believe we were married to each other. He had a different surname. And he was like a professor out of central casting for a professor. And a, he looked like Hemingway, gray beard and wear tweed suits. And have, did you ever have him as a teacher? No, but you saw it. And like a deep voice and would really, you know, very sort of, uh, 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 and, and I'd be like, ah, my office looks like a piñata, you know, and, and um, he would only come to my office in search of food. He would come to my office like a seagull looking for orange peel, you know, because I have a, I'm a girl, I have a refrigerator, a microwave, a toaster oven, and bowls of candy, and he would like, ah, So the students would be there, I have six advisees waiting online outside, and this guy would come in and go like, do you have a Reese's Pieces, you know, and then, and then leave, and they'd go, who is that guy, you know, it was very scary, and um, but he retired, and now he could buy his own candy, and it's fine, and so anyway, but so the young women would come up, and they say, you don't look like a feminist, and I would explain to them that every, I assume everybody I meet, male or female, is a feminist, because I give people the benefit of the doubt. You know? I'm assuming you're, you know, evolved enough to be walking upright and using cutlery to eat your food. <laughs> hey, you're probably a feminist. Because I assume that people would agree with me that the definition of feminism is the radical belief that women are human beings. Mm -hmm. Right? I'll take a for that. It's not like it's a tough club to get into. Okay? There's no dues. You don't have to wear shoes that go down at the back. You know, it's really not. You just have to believe that, like, women have souls, should have the right to vote, and we're working on that equal pay for equal work thing, but I you know that's, like, too radical for some people. So, I, you know, the church had one lesson for women my age growing up in this big Italian parish in Brooklyn, New York, and that lesson was to remember that sex was something dirty and disgusting that you save for someone you love. <laughs> Therapy has helped. <laughs> so is a new generation of serotonin reintake inhibitors. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. And you know, so I'm working my way through that, but the nun said I could like, you know, I might not get into heaven through the front door, but they'd have somebody prop something up in the back, and I'm I'm counting on it working that way. I have two stepsons that are they were they're actually at that adorable age now. They're so cute at this age. They've finished law school. Their job kids are so cute. <laughs> it's so much easier than the baby gap stage. Um, they, they came into my life, actually, when they were 11 and 13. And my husband and I started dating. We were both divorced, started dating. And, um, and I, was, I still had my apartment in New York. Uh, I just had a tenure, but I kept my apartment. I was commuting up and back. And, um, and he, I had an old alley cat that had been like my best friend who had adopted from the Lower East Side. And, uh, and he said, you know, I don't know how this is gonna work in terms of our relationship because I'm allergic to cats. You know, if we're gonna move in together and cat. I said, you have an 11 year old and a 13 year old. I'm not keeping the goddamn cat. <laughs> we're the smart feminists. We're the funny broads. 
And yet, we still believe. We believe. We believe it is possible to erase the appearance of fine lines around our delicate eye area with the application of a product made from placenta abstract. <laughs> you just don't want to know whose placenta it is. <laughs> we want to believe that highlighting our hair will make us look as if we've been in the sun instead of in a salon with enough chewing gum sized pieces of Reynolds wrap sticking out of our heads to pick up a radio in the pile on a clear day. <laughs> we insist on believing that a flat tummy, toned arms, thin thighs, and a firm neck will make us feel better about ourselves. When all it really takes to make us feel better about ourselves is a martini and a plate of cheese snacks. <laughs>